A pizza man follows the instructions of a client entering a seemingly abandoned yet lit house to deliver the pizza. When suddenly he faces paranormal occurrences, trapping him within the house, having to stay in until 6 a.m. in the morning in order to escape. Hi folks, I'm R and welcome to the video. This was a highly requested game both on Twitter and in the comment section, which I finally managed going over. If you want your favorite game and short movie to be featured on the channel as well, make sure to send me a message on Twitter or tagging me by mentioning my username, Gamersu. This video will contain spoilers. With that in mind, let's begin. A pizza man arrives at a house in 905 Sister Street to deliver a pizza, being instructed to enter the house having an open door. As soon as he enters, he's welcomed with silence and an empty house, when suddenly the entry door behind him shuts and locks, with a ghostly figure of a girl appearing shortly before disappearing. In the kitchen, he finds an open laptop with a delivery order from the pizza shop he works in called Checkers, indicating he was called in for a trap. As whoever ordered the pizza didn't even bother to close the laptop or wait for the pizza, showing lack of any interest. On a whiteboard in the kitchen, he is instructed to play with some people at midnight, when in another room an entity crawls on the floor very quickly, seemingly the same ghost of the girl. A note left behind reads that this ghost girl still had some friends who were called Kiki, Chester, and Mr. Tatters, as if trying to prove something to someone. As the pizza man goes to the master bedroom, he observes Mr. Tedder sitting motionless. As he starts reading a note seemingly written by a previous victim, as specific people are trying to kill the victim, presumably the ghost girl, Mr. Tedders, Kiki, and Chester, the pizza man hears footsteps when he turns around, witnessing in shock the dull figure of Mr. Tedders has disappeared. Another note suggests that this ghost girl just wants to play, with the three dolls named Kiki, Mr. Tatters and Chester being her playmates. The TV then suddenly turns on with a news report explaining how a couple was murdered a month ago with no signs of forced entry when they were preparing to move, with the case still being under investigation. It's been over a month now and the police still haven't found any leads on the bizarre death of a local couple. The couple was found lifeless in their living room as neighbors were jogging by. The front door was wide open and the bodies could be easily seen from the street. There were no signs of forced entry. As the time reaches midnight, the Kiki doll keeps unstocking the pizza man, following all of his steps, then suddenly disappearing after a short while. She needs to be stared at until she disappears, as not staring at her would lead to the pizza man's death. As time reaches 1am, Mr. Tatters also joins Kiki and both follow the pizza man. A note on the whiteboard mentions to not stay still, a deceitful message which would end up with the pizza man dying if he would adhere to. The whiteboard frequently gives the protagonist instructions which are the exact opposite of what he must do to stay alive. The third doll, Chester, also joins the mix as time passes and plays a game of tag with the pizza man, rushing with all of his speed towards him. Yet again, if he gets caught, he suffers a tragic death. The dolls in a way play psychotic games with the protagonist, with Mr. Tatter's game being red light, green light, hence why he would die if he would move. The time finally reaches 4am when Emily, the ghost girl, also joins in playing a game of hide and seek in the dark with the pizza man, who is given a countdown to find her, who would yet again die if he wouldn't play along or would fail to find her. Meanwhile, the pizza man discovers more scattered notes and audio recordings around the house, unveiling the tragic backstory of Emily. Emily and her parents, Maggie and Herbert Withers, move to the house in 905 Sister Street, finding a beautiful large home with a very decent and affordable price. Happy that they found an unbelievably amazing property for a low price, the parents notice Emily changing and becoming aggressive and strange, as if she's not herself anymore. They simply dismiss it as Emily not adjusting with the new environment, especially as she really liked their previous house. Things become much worse when Emily gets expelled from three different schools due to her behavioral issues, within the last one hurting a fellow classmate very badly, which makes the parents come to the difficult decision to homeschool her and keep her in the house, not to hurt anyone anymore. Ever since we moved in, Emily started acting different. 
She really liked our old house, but we had to move. I guess it really stressed her out. I don't know. Emily hurt a girl in school today. She's not allowed to go back. This is the third school she has been to. We're gonna keep her home now. After a while, they discover that Emily has been playing and talking with three inanimate strange looking dolls found in the basement, whom Emily calls Mr. Tedders, Kiki, and Chester. At first, they don't mind it, thinking it might even be good for her, improving her communication skills, being the only good thing since they moved here, as it's something positive. There was a box of three very strange dolls down in the basement. Emily talks to them as if they can hear her. Maybe it's a good sign. It's the first positive thing in a long time. To solve Emily's issues, fearing for her mental health, Maggie goes to a psychiatrist, pretending she has depression while in fact she wants to find a way to help Emily. For some reason, not sending her to the psychiatrist, seemingly worried that she might hurt people, making her end up in a psych ward. The psychiatrist suggests recording audio logs to help her depression, which Maggie thinks might actually be helpful for fixing Emily's sudden change in personality. My psychiatrist says I should start recording a log to help with my depression. He doesn't know. It's all about Emily. I can't tell him anything about that. But I'll record myself anyway. Maybe it'll help. As time progresses, Emily shows more violent tendencies, even scaring her parents, whom she stares at while they are sleeping. As a last resort, they think giving her a companion would take away from some of her stress and make her better, leading to them buying her a puppy. This ultimately ends with Emily brutally killing the puppy, which makes the parents horrified. Soon, the parents observe a massive hole created on Emily's floor, connecting to the other side of the basement, which they don't understand how it appeared, believing Emily must have had a hand in it, with Emily progressively becoming worse. We are scared of our own daughter. She was standing in our bedroom last night, staring at us. We're going to start locking her down in the basement. We bought her a puppy. It was so cute. We thought it would help her. Poor puppy. Emily didn't like it. A hole fell through Emily's old room into the other side of the basement today. We know Emily had something to do with it, but we don't understand what's going on. The parents ultimately make the difficult choice to make a space for Emily in the basement to keep themselves safe and yet keep Emily safe from being arrested or taken to a psych ward. They cover the entry to the basement so no one would be able to let her out or even find her there as it would be considered as child abuse. No one will help us. No one can help us. This house had a basement in it. We made a place for Emily down there. My husband hid the entrance so that no one could ever find it. Emily, on the other hand, thinks that her parents don't love her and don't care about her, being upset that they locked her in the basement, not understanding that she's being dangerous, seemingly not being even aware of her hostile actions, as if she has a split personality or being possessed by an evil entity. Emily feels grateful that she still has the dolls, whom she refers to as her friends, to play with while being locked in the basement. However, things only become worse after that. Emily mentions through a note that his friends help her and love her as they play with Emily, being the only entity showing any sort of interest towards her. Emily also displays how much she loves her new playmates, taking care of them and playing with them, but to an extent as if they are real human beings, capable of human characteristics, being autonomous. When finally, due to Emily's conditions worsening, with the parents believing that the dolls might be the culprit, they take away the dolls from her, enraging Emily to a large extent. Feeling unloved and alone, having the only entities she thought are her friends and remotely like her taken away, Emily passes away with the mother finding her motionless corpse in the basement, not having any sign of injuries for her death after she tries to check on her and feed her. The parents try to hide Emily's body and discard of her, not reporting it to the police as they fully understand how bad this would look, very possibly getting locked up if anybody would find out about it, with them locking their daughter in the basement until she died. I went down in the basement today to bring Emily some food. She was laying on the floor lifeless. She wasn't breathing. She didn't have a pulse. She didn't have any injuries. We can't go to the police. How can we explain this? 
Maggie then finally mentions that the dolls they discarded of keep appearing around the house despite their daughter being gone, which terrifies them into leaving the house and preparing to move away when a distorted, horrifying audio mentions that they are one. <laughs> Eventually, just before 6 a.m., the pizza man discovers a note written in a different ink color saying to join us, with an image of Emily being surrounded by the dolls and an unexplained entity behind them all menacingly staring at them. The entity seemingly was the culprit behind possessing Emily and making her become hostile and aggressive, who also possessed the dolls. Therefore, Emily wasn't inherently bad, and she didn't even seem to know about the horrible actions she was made to do under the control of the sinister entity, an entity that dwelled within the house, hence why it was sold for a much cheaper price. This is displayed through the notes with Emily being confused and saddened why she is being treated as such by her parents, getting locked in the basement and treated as a lunatic. She expressed how unloved and alone she felt by her parents, only finding comfort alongside her dolls, whom the parents took away as well. Emily then dies a tragic and lonely death, being alone in the dark, locked in the basement with her parents, even hiding her body and not reporting it. The hole that appeared on the floor, opening to the other side of the basement, apparently freed the sinister entity, making him more powerful to possess Emily's body. Therefore, Emily was just a victim who suffered a tragic fate. The note in the beginning saying that they want to kill me seems to also be from another person that was lured into the haunted house, going through the same games that Dolls and Emily wanted to play. The fate of the person who was there before the pizza man is left to own speculations and is unclear. As the time reaches 6am, the whiteboard mentions that it was fun playing with the pizza man and that he should come again, displaying that Emily genuinely just wanted to play, her soul being resentful and lonely wanting someone to accompany her. It's also unclear if she's still under the influence of the murderous entity or not. As the pizza man is allowed to leave the premises, being traumatized by the experience, he directly goes to the police and reports the incident, saying he was locked in the house by three dolls and a young girl. The news confirms the house to had been the same house where two locals or the couple died within one month ago under mysterious circumstances, with the TV reporting on it in the beginning of the game. The couple in fact are no other than Herbert and Maggie Withers, the parents of Emily who tried to move out after being spooked by the hunting dolls. Their death seems to be the result of the entity who took over Emily's buddy and the dolls, who wrote the note instructing the reader to join them. He seemingly acted as a puppeteer, enjoying the fact he can control people and even possibly their souls. He maybe was even able to trap Emily's parents' souls and control them. The pizza man, who narrowly managed to escape his almost certain death, suffered from mental trauma and gets evaluated by a psychiatrist as part of the investigation. That's it for the end of the video folks, there's also another game called Emily Wants to Play 2, which I will make a subsequent video about, which you can stay tuned for by hitting the subscribe button and also turning on the notification bell. It's been your host Star, thanks for being here and I will see you on the next one.